Hello, everyone. My name is Oksana. It's Road to Edwards, weekly Edwards Insiders at 15th. We deliver the news about the creation of our, our project Edwards. So, as usual, first of all, Oksana, make you speak to us about hey, the project. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you, Oksana. Uh, hi, this is Hiro Tokugawa. Uh, now, um, now, I would uh, like to get into the details of creating this uh, great city of Edo. And uh, one aspect that we tend to uh, uh, for, forget or uh, occasionally ignore about uh, historical Edo is that it was the ultimate police state. The Tokugawa shogunate was the ultimate police state. Uh, come to think of it, all the samurai uh, wore, well, clothes with their family crest on the vest or whatever you call it. And then you could tell from what they were, which daimyo they're serving and uh, what act with what family background they have, their rank as a samurai, and so on and so forth. So uh, official Tokugawa Japan was pretty much visualized in the city of Edo. This is one. And the other is that you can tell practically anyone uh, which class they belong to from their hairstyle. And this is, uh, so when you talk about Edo, it's always chommage. Uh, the English word would be the uh, top knot. But also you had to shave uh, the top of your head as well, your scalp. Uh, and, and then it gets interesting from here is that, of course, hair grows. That's why Schick and Gillette are very big companies, because hair grows, beards grow. The samurai always had to keep their scalp very clean and smooth. So they had to shave like every three days. Um, a wealthy samurai could have his own people uh, take care of that. But uh, most lower ranking samurai had to go to the barber. And then the barber was serving as the secret police or as the informant uh, to the uh, machibugyo. So that is the uh, magistrate of the town, of, the town of the city of Edo. And uh, so a suspicious person could not get his scalp shaved and then the uh well the uh okapiki or whatever who is uh the, what would be the edo city police would see an unshaved head and then uh automatically that could be arrested so that served as like an arrest warrant yes and uh yes and whenever uh one would travel to outside of edo so in any major city people had to have their scalp shaved so but unless you have permission from the temple which you worship and you bury your family and ancestors on the occasion of travel then they won't give you the permission to get your ha head shaved in your destination so you become a suspicious person in wherever you travel so this way the tokugawa regime controlled its population through barbers and by shaving their heads. And yes, you, you always had to shave your head if you want to keep it smooth. So, so that was the secret of the domestic piece of Tokuga Japan, or at least a part of it. Okay. And I think my time is up. So uh, thank you very much, Oksana. That's for today. Thank you very much, Tokugawa-san. It's a, a, a very, uh, very fun part of the... I, I haven't expected that, actually. Also, uh, the next again, San, could you please uh, speak to us about all our achievements the last week? All right. All right. Thank you, Oksana. Hello, everybody. Uh, I was so excited to hear that new story. Uh, we are most welcome for all of the Baba to come to Edward's space to share the lot of samurai for me. Uh, today, I'd like to update two things. Uh, one thing is we have just started to ex examine uh, the token, token mix. I mean, uh, we, are, we are about to issue new NFTs, which is related with uh, Edvas One. And we start to examine the source code is working or not. And then it seems to be fine. Maybe uh, I'm thrilled to announce that we finally, you know, NFTs about to be issued and minted uh, to deliver all of the people. And then the other thing is finally uh, last week, I arranged some meeting with Dominic and uh, famous 3D studios in the North US, which is super great, uh, super attractive and powerful. And then finally we uh, almost got agreed upon creating the new 3D space with high visual and then the, the cutting edge function, of course, including NFT wallets and sending and receiving everything. Uh, and then uh, 3D concept is supposed to be announced quite soon. 
And uh, definitely this uh, space of metaverse is incredible. Uh, compared to any other spaces, definitely our metaverse space is going to be more high sophisticated and high visual. And as if you were really in Edo era, although it's in 2022. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm really, you know, uh, looking forward to showing this sample space, which is supposed to be maybe, I'm not sure, around the end of June or at latest the top of July. And then all of those, you know, creatives uh, must be checked and advised by Mr. Iehiro-san, uh, Mr. Tokugawa, so that our space is going to be more historical kind of new space. I'm really, you know, looking forward to sharing this space with all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Ken. It really sounds like a dream come came true for the Edo fans, <laughs> I think. Also, next, uh, Mitsushi, can you please uh, join our uh, talk today? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Oksana. So today I'd like to talk about updates with regards to online events. Uh, so in 6th of June, we will have a online event. We will call it Monthly Adverse Insider Rainy Season Camp because we have a weekly Adverse Insider in this podcast. So uh, we decided to have a monthly online event. So that's going to be called Monthly Adverse Insider. And uh, it, it will be carried out. The event will be carried out, carried out in Japanese. So we will target Japanese audience this time. But we are happy to uh, insert English subtitles and re-upload that a recorded uh, video in YouTube so that we are able to uh, reach out to a wider range of audience globally. And the content of the event will be very straightforward. So we'll be talking about the overviewing concept of Edverse, and we'll be talking about the details of token sales and land NFT sales. And also we'd like to welcome Iehiro-san and we'd like to ask Iehiro-san to deliver a speech. And we will also have a FAQ and Q&A session. And the purpose of this event is that um, for Messi about a cryptocurrency, about how to actually purchase uh, NFTs and tokens. So we'll be introducing very rudimentary and basic stuff uh, including but not limited to how to download MetaMask into your computer or how to set up MetaMask or uh, where to go and which button to push and so on. So we would like to get, have a, that sort of uh, detailed uh, session and lecture about, uh, you know, actually purchasing tokens. I think that's a, mandate, uh, that's a prerequisite for a lot of uh, customers. And that's one uh, important update. So I think... Uh, every month we will have this kind of online event. So it's seventh of, uh, you know, eighth uh, of August and ninth uh, of September. You know, uh, we will have this kind of event. So I, I think uh, we would like to sort of uh, activate our community even further. Um, by the way, I was very surprised that uh, Berber in uh, Idaho City uh, played a role of secret policing. I think similar kind of phenomena is happening in the uh, entertainment industry. I have been working in the uh, entertainment industry in Japan. My first job was uh, in a music label in Japan. So usually uh, hair, hair makeup artists and hairdressers have a lot of information in entertainment industry. <laughs> they are the hub of information because all the talent artists casually talk about their private stuff to hair makeup artists and hairdressers. So they have almost all the information with regards to every single talent in different production. So they sort of played a secret, they played a role of secret intelligence and policing, right? So if you have a big deal with some uh, new client in new production, maybe it's better to ask a hairdressers or hair makeup artist as a due diligence, right? <laughs> and they have some information about anti-social forces as well, right? Mm -hmm. So I really think similar phenomena is happening right now in Tokyo, right? Uh, in this age, <laughs> I was very surprised to uh, hear that. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It's great to know that uh, the tradition is going on. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mitsushi. Uh, uh, also, Dominique, could you please uh, speak uh, about all, all our achievements our pl and plans from now on? Okay, thank you, Oksana. And also, I think Baba's story was very, very interesting. 
Yeah, the informants in a uh, of cities is the barbers. Actually, the status is I don't know, um, but it, uh, yeah, they're actually functioning just in the societies. It's very very interesting. Anyway, uh, in Edinburgh, I don't know how many barbers just will be open, <laughs> and then it's gonna just you know the guy the burning the the. Uh, the society in a very interesting way. Um, the last week, uh, we had a lot of uh, meetings and then every staff um, just uh, just devoting to uh, their so on, on assignments. And then I'm very happy just to see. And then we have a lot of uh, uh, great progress just on the Edubus construction now. Um, we had a, a very serious meeting with a, a uh, 3D uh, producers in the states. There was, um, uh, with again, I think that was um, uh, uh, very, very useful for us. And we're going to see that, as Gem mentioned, um, uh, we see uh, the real, real visuals. It's, it's going to be very interesting. And then we see um, two minute teasers uh, just before July, probably, and then everyone can can see that and what kind of uh, visuals that we see that in Airbus in the future. Um, uh, that uh, was very exciting uh, things, and also uh, um, we're just preparing for that the rainy camps, rainy season camp, and the ones for insiders just held on the sixth of July at uh, sixth of June. Um, that's also uh, uh, we have to explain everything now uh, to uh, uh, to the potential uh, participants uh, how uh, we allocate uh, the NFTs and also how we allocate uh, the. Uh, uh, the Zenis and also our tokens just on the 7th of July. Um, we have a, I think uh, we have 30, it's a, a little more than 30 days mm -hmm. just left to go uh, to the, the first token sale and the first uh, NFT sale. So uh, we have to really rush just to decide the many, many things and everyone must be, must, must have a sort of really serious effort to do, uh, to complete it anyway. And, and then um, we had also a meetings with us, uh, several meetings with the property, the potential property agents. Um, that is that we have land NFTs. Um, and then uh, even this time, uh, the fast run sales is more than 9,690 NFTs, means that the, not, the, around 10,000 lands will be sold. Um, but of course, uh, uh, this, this is going to be uh, just uh, connected with the property agents, and that they're going to just they're going to contribute to the to the locations. So um, we have a lot of things, and then um, uh, and then we are now uh, uh, thinking what kind of avatars that we are just uh, creating just toward the September's because we're going to have a, the big auction for the avatars in Edibus. Um That that's going to be also very very exciting too. So we, now we have many things uh, in June because this is the end of May. And, and then we have just just the, from the 6th of June that, that we see uh, that a lot of real sort of business is coming uh, just toward the 7th of July. So um, please just wait for, uh, wait for uh, many events uh, from the Edubus. And then we're just looking forward, just meeting with everybody just who are interested in Edubus. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, for uh, talking today. And uh, I will hear you next week with Mike.